welcome to Hoko Polizzo's Poetry Moment. Interviewing E. Ethelbert Miller is like trying to keep track of everyone's names at a crowded cocktail party after downing a couple of glasses of something potent. Miller's 50-year immersion in the poetry world means that he was friends with poets such as Sterling Brown and Amiri Baraka and gave a boost to writers such as Elizabeth Alexander, Tanahisi Coates, Charles Johnson, Dwayne Betts, and Cornelius Eady. Faster than one can jot them down in a soggy napkin, Miller throws out names and book titles and acronyms punctuated with his trademark giggles. Miller's poem, Is Eric Dolphy Coming or Going? Feels like attending a poetic party with Miller as your wingman, throwing out names and ideas thick and heavy. Miller is such a polymath that it helps to have a glossary to his poetry. Since there are so many references to his 52 year history in the poetry world, as well as his lifelong devotion to jazz, black culture and baseball. Don't worry about knowing all the names at parties. Everyone forgets the names. Listen to the poem. Look up a few names drown in Eric Dolphy's music. Catch some photos of Roberto Clemente sliding into home and listen to the poem again. Here's a cheat sheet to some of the characters Miller mentions. Frank O'Hara was a poet born in Baltimore who moved to New York and wrote poems about life in the Big Apple while he worked as a curator at the Museum of Modern Art. Billy Strayhorn spent nearly 30 years composing, arranging, and playing with Duke Ellington. He wrote the song, Take the A-Train. August Wilson, was a Pulitzer Prize winning playwright, author of plays such as Fences, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and The Piano Lesson. Roberto Clemente was born in Puerto Rico and became the first Latin American named to the Baseball Hall of Fame. John Ashbery is generally regarded as one of the greatest 20th century American poets. He won both the Pulitzer and the National Book Award. Eric Dolphy played the bass clarinet, flute, piccolo and the alto saxophone for which he is best known. And lastly, in a sentimental mood by John Coltrane and Duke Ellington needs no other explanation besides listening to it. Turn on some jazz and listen to Miller's poem along with it. Is Eric Dolphy coming or going? <laughs> it's 1208 and Frank O'Hara is late for lunch. He often gets lost outside New York. I'm in Starbucks near DuPont Circle, sitting with Billy Strayhorn. Our conversation turns to Pittsburgh, and for a moment, I want to be August Wilson or Roberto Clemente. Billy asks to see my Washington Post. He wants to know what the police are doing these days. Frank arrives, and he looks like Mona Lisa with a smile. Maybe it's the danger that comes with museum work. Eric Dolphy is eating next door, he whispers. At times, Frank can be as difficult as Ashbury. Have they ever met? Imagine all the New York poets moving to New Jersey and never taking the Amtrak to DC. Billy hands the newspaper back. It's 12.30 and everyone is in a sentimental mood. We rise and go next door. Dolphy looks up from his plate and says, the food here sucks, but it's better than the music people are playing these days. <laughs> he laughs and tells Frank to keep his day job. Billy tries to be as gracious as Duke. He nods at Dolphy and the two of them walk outside for a smoke. I think of Dolphy's Out to Lunch album. The clock tells me this man is never coming back. Mm -hmm.